Hey friends, it's Marie here from Marie Nicole Designs. I'm just sharing a quick video showing you these Nouveau gilding flakes and how they work. So these Nouveau flakes, they come in three different colors. They are three metallics. You've got gold, you've got silver, and you've got copper. Now these are just really thin flakes that you can add to some kind of adhesive. You just need something sticky for them to adhere to. And then you can add some really fun gold texture and gold shine to any of your projects. Now I'm showing you how to use these on paper today, but you can also use these on different surfaces if you wanted to use them for home decor or doing any kind of table decorations or different things like that. I did not use them on any wood or metal or anything like that, so I can't recommend how well they work with those surfaces, but perfectly fine with paper, so that's what I'm going to show you today. So one thing that I wanted to show you that I thought was really cool is if you take some of this Nouveau Deluxe Liquid Glue, you can squirt it right onto a stencil and then use one of these spatulas and stencil it on your background. So this really opens up a lot of possibilities if you wanted to get a gilded, um, flaked kind of background. I'm doing it over these stars here on this stencil just to show you how it kind of works. I'm trying to make sure I'm scraping all of that glue into those nooks and crannies and really filling up those star areas on my stencil. Now another way you could do this is squirt a little bit right onto your spatula and just apply it into specific spots that you want it to go um, and as always when you're stenciling just be careful not to kind of lift up your stencil you could uh, tape it down if you don't want it to shift on you and then once you're comfortable with the way you applied your glue you can just peel off that stencil and see the glue that you've left behind now I do like to leave this for a minute or two while I go wash off my stencil and my spatula um, and I also like to let the glue get a little bit tacky before I add these flakes you don't want it to be completely liquidy because then you might squish that design that you just put on with the glue but you don't want it to dry all the way either because then you won't be able to have any of that stickiness left that you can put these flakes on top of so I just like to let it dry for a few minutes while I go and wash off my stencil and my spatula and then I come back and I gently apply these flakes over the top now I prefer to apply these flakes right with my finger. Um, I know a lot of people do this as well and then they use a brush to brush away the excess. I prefer to just use my finger and just lightly sort of rub or burnish these flakes onto my glue. Um, like I mentioned before, this glue is not completely dry, um, so I'm not pushing very hard when I'm wiping away the extra flakes. I just want to get the extras off of here because you can use extra pieces, um, but I also don't want to squish that glue, so I'm not pushing really hard. And then I'm going to set it aside, let it dry completely, and then I will come back and then act I use my finger to rub away any of that extra flakes that is not adhered down. So I think this is a really fun way to use these flakes with your stencils. You can really add some fun shine in different shapes and patterns by being able to use it with your glue and with your stencils. Now, Nuvo and Tonic, they have a lot of different adhesives that you can use with this um, uh, gilding flakes, you don't just have to use glue. I'm showing you today a lot of different adhesives that you can use to get different looks and different effects. So here's kind of a little close-up look of those stars. Like I said, I'm not going to really rub it very hard. I don't want to squish that glue. So I will come back later and clean up those stars a little bit, but I think it's really fun that you can use your stencils with these flakes. So the next thing that you can do is you can use some of this red line tape um, from Craft Perfect. Now this is some really super sticky tape. Uh, it's got a little bit of thickness to it, a little bit thicker than a tape runner adhesive. Um, but all you have to do is apply it where you want it. This would be great if you wanted to make stripes on a background or um, put a border or a frame on something. All you have to do is stick it onto your paper and then release that backing paper and then add your uh, gilded gilding flakes on top. So I'm just taking these little extra bits that's left over from my stenciling and putting those back on top. And then, like I mentioned before, I'm just using my finger to rub it down and rub off all those extra bits. And then you have a gilded, a gold flaked little strip here that I think is really fun and really shiny. 
So I'm going to tip this in the light so you can kind of see how that works. For these gilding flakes, really, the only thing you have to do is get something for them to adhere to, and you're good to go. They do get a little bit messy, I'll be honest. They are very light little flakes, so if you have a fan blowing, if you have an air conditioner going, um, be careful because they do like to fly around. So when I work with them, I make sure my ceiling fan is turned off. Um, it's not the end of the world. You can wipe them up. You can vacuum them up. <laughs> but if you want to stay away from a little bit of mess, just make sure you don't have any air blowing. Don't go by a open window or anything. So as you may have noticed, I keep using these little bits over and over. And the smaller your flake bits are going to be, the more texture you're going to have on your gilded tape or gilded pieces. So you can see here that this, um, this strip of tape, I just used another type of tape from Tonic, is one that easily tears without having to cut it. You can see the difference in these two tapes. The one I just did has a little bit more texture because you have some smaller pieces of flakes on there. Um, and the other one's a little bit more smooth, so you can kind of control, you know, the look that you want um, with your flakes by just controlling the size of the flakes that you put on there. So this is a foam square. This is, uh, you know, if you wanted to use any foam adhesive, you could. You can gild it and give it some dimension. You just do it the same way you do everything else. You put a flake on there and you just kind of rub it around all the edges, get all the little bits to flake off that aren't sticking to anything. And then you can gild some dimension if you wanted to do that as well. So you can also do your foam adhesive as well as your tape runner adhesive, your liquid glue. And I know that Nuvo also has a few glue pens um, that I didn't show in this video, but those work as well. So that's just a little foam square. And here is a tape runner adhesive. Now I'm using Nuvo, but there's lots of different tape runner adhesives out there that will work just fine with this. Like I mentioned before, if you use a larger piece of these flakes like I'm doing here, you're going to get a much smoother application than the one next to it, which used a lot of those leftover tiny bits. So once I got all of this covered with the flakes, you're going to really see the difference between the two. The one that I'm doing now is really quite smooth, and the one next to it has a lot more texture, and I think both of them are beautiful. I love that texture in there, but if you really want something really smooth, just use those larger flakes and then smooth them out. So you do get a little bit of control on the finish that you have just by using different size flakes. So that's a look at using a few different adhesives, but I wanted to show you one more little technique if you wanted to go ahead and gild some shapes or some letters. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. I prefer to use some adhesive sheets. So Craft Perfect from Tonic, they do have these double-sided adhesive sheets, and these are really great for adding to your cardstock and then running through your die cutting machine. So I am just grabbing one of these sheets of adhesive, and this is an 8.5 by 11, I believe, sheet of adhesive. It's got the backing paper on both sides. It's double-sided, so what I prefer to do is peel off one side of this adhesive sheet, if you can get the backing paper off, and then I like to um, not peel it off all the way, just part way so that I can slip a card front in there or some cardstock in there, and then I'm going to adhere that on one side to my cardstock. And then I'm going to put my um, backing right on top of that again and kind of uh, use my folding tool and kind of really burnish that down so that adhesive is going to be stuck very well to this cardstock, and then I can die cut with it. So I'm making sure I go all around all the edges, and then I'm just going to grab my scissors and trim that out, and I'm going to be able to load it up with die cuts. So one thing you do want to remember when you're using the adhesive sheets is that you're going to have one side, if you do it the way that I'm showing you, you put a piece of cardstock on there, you're going to have one side that is sticky and one side that is not. The side that is sticky is going to be your front because that's the side that you're going to add the gilding flakes to. So I'm using a nice detailed little wreath here. It's a die from Tonic. And I'm also going to be using some of these bold alphabet letters from Altenew. Now, the letters that I use fortunately worked out that since 
I'm cutting it from the back side. They are actually backwards, um, but the letters that I use were all able to flip so that you couldn't tell even when I put the gilding flakes on the other side. If you want to make sure that you have your sticky side on the front, flip your card over and put your die cuts on the adhesive sheet. So they're on the cardstock side. You might want to flip it over and put it on the adhesive side. That way you don't have to worry about your letters being cut backwards. I didn't think about that until after I did this. So it's always a learning process, but just think about which side you want to be the front. The front of your die cut is always going to be the sticky side. Um, so think about that before you use letters or images that you don't want flipped. So I'm just using my craft pick to kind of get all of these die cuts out of here. You can see this really detailed die. The backing paper stayed on my cardstock, so it's sticky already. It released the backing paper, so I'm just being careful as I poke it out. Um, the gilding flakes work really good on these shapes. They work really good on these letters. On this little detailed die cut here, it was a little bit hard to really clean up the edges because I didn't want to rip my little wreath. So if you have a very delicate little die, um, you might get varied results, um, but it's really fun to put gilding flakes on these letters and on the shapes. So I am using the silver flakes for this little snowflake wreath here. As you can see, it's kind of looking like a glob of flakes right now. Like I mentioned, it's kind of hard to clean up all of these delicate little sides. I found that it was actually easiest to just glob those flakes on this wreath and then just gently work with it until I got it um, cleaned up a little bit, bit better to my liking. Now it wasn't cleaned up perfectly the way I would like it. I think if I had a bigger die cut it would work better, but this delicate little die cut it didn't clean up quite as well as I would have hoped. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're doing these gilding flakes. I found that it was easiest for me to pick up this little wreath, rub it with my fingers and even with my nails to get any of that um, extra flakes off the side. Um, and I think I probably could take a little bit more time to clean it up as well. It just depends on how much time you want to invest in this. So it did clean up all right, not as perfectly as I would have liked, but it works. And I'm sure there are lots of different die cuts that you could experiment with this technique with. So moving on to my letters, like I mentioned, um, my letters were ones that fortunately worked out that you could flip them. Um, but if you're worried about, you know, getting them backwards or whatever, just make sure that you cut them with having in mind that the sticky side is going to be the front. So I'm going to use my copper flakes now for my die cuts. I'm just taking little flakes of this um, gilding flakes and just rubbing them on like I did with all the other adhesive in the beginning of this video, covering all of the sticky parts, all of that adhesive that is exposed, and then just taking my finger and simply rubbing it down. And you can clean up the sides as well and you're left with a really pretty, really shiny gilded uh, letter that you can add as a sentiment to any card. I also like gilding those shape die cuts. I'll have one here as an example to show you where I gilded lots of stars and layered them on a Christmas card and I think that was really fun. So <laughs> if you follow my videos you know that I like to put gold, you, I like to put sh shiny things all over my cards and just these gilding flakes are another fun way to do that. So I'm just making sure that I have these gilding flakes all rubbed down, all adhered well to the um, die cut. I'm cleaning up the sides here. I'm making sure that there's no extra adhesive that's kind of poking out that I missed. Um, it's really easy to kind of pick up any of that gilding flake from your glass mat and just add it to any of those exposed parts that you may have missed. And it's a really easy way to kind of pick up those little tiny bits that you may otherwise have to throw out. So use all of the flakes that you can and then you're left with some really pretty gilded alphabet letters here. So I have all three of my letters all flaked, all gilded, and I think they look really fun. Here is an example that I'll show you of some of the star die cuts that I've done. 
die cut them with the adhesive sheets and the cardstock like I did in my letters and I just put some of that gold gilding on there. Now you can see that some of these stars are more textured than others. Others are more smooth and that's just the size of the flakes that you're using. Some of them I use some of those leftover tiny bits and some of them I use some of those larger flakes. So you can kind of control the different finishes you get just by using different sizes of flakes. So that's kind of a look at these gilding flakes. I hope it gives you some tips and ideas. If you have any comments, please post them down below. Make sure you give a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I will catch you guys next time. I hope you have a great day. Bye.